Welcome to the Hyper Guy Motivational Podcast. Thank you so much for being here today. Today's guest is B. Ayaso. I want to make sure I got that right. Ayaso. Um, mm-hmm. And um, and B is a fitness instructor extraordinaire, female bodybuilding champion, uh, a bodybuilder on top of that, a, a business owner. And and I'll she'll talk about her business a little bit. Um, in fact, I'm going to take her up on her business the next time. I have the opportunity. Um, she is a influencer on TikTok and Instagram. Thank you so much for being here today, B. Thank you, Martin, for the invitation. I really appreciate it. B, can you give out? I like to do this now because I'm kind of changing things up a little bit. Can you please give out your Instagram and your TikTok and ways people can get a hold of you? Yes. Uh, on Instagram, I'm at B Ayuso. On TikTok, I'm at B Ayuso1. And I also have a fitness uh, fit club page, also on Instagram that is called um, We Are Sharks Fit Club. That you can also join there. Hey, B. Hey, B. Can you um, can you spell out your name so on Instagram so people know how to spell it out? Because sometimes people spell it uh, a bunch of different ways. Right. It's B S in boy, E S in elephant, E S in elephant. A S in Apple, Y S N N Y Y Y York. U U S in uh unicorn, um S S in sofa, O S in orange. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds good. It's so, kind hey, of hard to think in English. Sorry. Oh no, it's all it's all good. A B, so let me I'm gonna start off. I always start off this way. When were you born and raised? I was born and raised in Guatemala, and I moved to the States uh, about um, when I was 22. So what was it like growing up in Guatemala? Like, how many how many brothers and sisters do you have? What was okay. that like for you? We are, we're in total of four girls. Uh, so it was crazy because, uh, I mean, imagine all, having all those hormones floating in the house. Then um, we were raised by my mom, single mom. Um, so growing up over there, it's, it's, it's pretty normal, you know, like just, it's very, a little bit different from here. Food is different. Um, culture is a little bit different, slightly different, um, different holidays, different, but also like very in the sense that we have Mother's Day, Father's Day, Independence, Independence Day, all that we have over there. So it's pretty normal. Just the fact that, um, the safety issue would be like way different. So I would say like it's more safer here in the States, um, I suppose it's in Guatemala. So what was it like growing up there? Like, was it was it a struggle for you? What was it like for your family there? Is, your fa- is all your family here? No, um, mostly it's back home in Guatemala. Honestly, I'm gonna tell you uh, that we had a very comfortable um, upbringing because my mom had a in the government so basically like we were in, we were going to nice schools we were uh, private school we will go um, to English classes um, sports and things like that so honestly we were we grew financially speaking yeah, B, sometimes you're cutting out a little bit. I think there might be something going on with your internet, so you may have to move it, uh, uh, okay. like connectivity-wise. But um, so, okay, so what? So what made you come to the United States? You you decided, hey, you know what? I want a, a different opportunity. Or what kind of drove you to to move to the United States? It was basically education. Um, I had the opportunity to apply for um, for a scholarship the states i came just basically to um uh, finish my undergrad here in the states and and then when did you so when you first came here you said you you came here at age 21 yeah yeah pretty much and then what did you do when you first came here you went to school and what else did you do when did you start getting into fitness i guess that's a good i guess that's a good way to so um basically it was just pretty soon after i came to the States because I was going back and forth, um, back to Guatemala and I would like have some 
vacation period and I would fly back. And then my mom realized that I kind of started to gain weight as I was here for a few months. And then she, she said, you know what? I think that you're gaining weight, a little bit of weight and too, too fast for the time that you've been there. So, um, you know, it's, it's pretty common because obviously portion size here and all the stuff that it's added to our food, unfortunately, you know, like it impacted my, my weight. So I started gaining weight, not like obese or like big weight, but it was different too. And so I started noticing too that, you know, my, my clothes wouldn't fit anymore. So that's when I started to get into the gym and not really knowing what I was doing because I always play, I was an, an, an athlete before, but I was playing soccer, I was playing basketball, I was playing volleyball, not such like uh, bodybuilding, let's say. So I didn't really know what I was doing at the gym, but uh, you know, I started like that, you know, just running in the treadmill and doing my thing, You're just trying to lose that way that I was gaining. So what is the difference between like American food in Guatemala and American and American food is it just is it fresher food in Guatemala than the states they just have more preservatives and additives? Yes, I would say the second thing. Uh, also, you know, yeah, more fresh stuff. But um, I I would say that the fact that here in America it's like uh, marketed as organic and it's not fully organic and the preservatives all the the things that are used to just to preserve the food, um, um, the sugar, the portion sizes also make a big, because over there, like, you know, like we, we, we have a, a decent meal and it's not as heavy as it's here, you know, like here the portions are way bigger. So what's your typical, like, can you give me a, um, and I, and we're going to go into a little bit about your, you have a business that kind of a, that you prepare, healthy meals, healthy meals. What's a, what's a typical like a uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner for you? Uh, right here in a normal day. Mm -hmm. uh, my breakfast would be some egg whites and um, perhaps sometimes when I'm not prepping for any bodybuilding competition, I add bacon, uh, eggs and a toast, maybe avocado. Uh, then lunch, it would be chicken, um, rice, veggies, and meals like that throughout the day consistently. Depending and then my intake, but yeah, basically it, it's all the same protein, veggies, and carbs. So how do you, how do you plan out? Like, so you, do you cut sugar out? Do you cut sugar totally out? Um, yeah, during prep season. Yes. Um, uh, it's, um, uh, there's some space where we do, uh, I well, we do like sugar-free stuff. Um, although it's 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 not as healthy either, but it's an option to just do this the the zero calorie. That's something that it doesn't impact as much your your prep. So can you give me like so you you're you're a like I said you're a, a very. Um, you're very accomplished in the bodybuilding world. And so the question I have for you is, what is a typical workout for you like throughout the day? So I know I know when bodybuilding, you're going to split your workouts typically. So how do you do that? How do you arrange that? And then and I guess that's part one of the question. And I'll go into part two later. OK, so um, this it, well, for it depends um, what division you are in. So let's say for my division that it's uh, it's the wellness division, um, it's uh, lower body more developed than the part the rest of the body, right? So it's bigger legs, bigger glutes, and um, that's what you're showcasing. And mostly, I mean, that doesn't mean that you're like you have to work out your entire body, but mainly the focus here is to outgrow your lower body. Okay, so let's say for my division, it will be, it will require me to do more leg workouts throughout the week than 
as as opposed as the shoulders and back, it would be like two days. And then the, the rest of the days would be like uh, split in between legs. So right now, for example, I have two days of glutes, two days of full legs, and then I have two days of upper body, which is not as heavy, but I, I, I also do upper body. So how many day, how many hours per day are you working out per day? Now we're talking, we're not talking about, because I know that you also teach which you work out too, which. Right. So yeah. you, do you count that? I assume you don't. I don't. Because because that is mainly the, the classes that I teach are mostly cycling. Uh, so those don't really count as workouts because I'm not I'm not using any weights. Right. Um, but it does count as. Car and, and then so how many hours per day are you spending working out? And then like, do you start early in the morning? Like, how do you split the day? If I'm in prep season, um, I'm working out about three hours a day, three, three and a half hours a day. It depends because honestly, sometimes, you know, it's it's about four hours. So it's a lot of time that it's spent um, in, during prep. But if I'm uh, like off season, I'm, I'm, I'm not during that time where I'm prepping for a show, then it's a more, you know, relaxed kind of thing because then you can um i can work out let's say an hour and a half and then i can do sometimes 20 minutes of cardio so it would be like uh if i'm off season let's say two hours and a half two hours so what would you recommend somebody that they wanted to get in shape not necessarily a bodybuilder but they want to get into shape what would you recommend somebody hey you know what um i just want to start uh, building muscle and um, and I don't want to get too big. And I know I, I think I address this at, at another podcast. I think some women feel like if they start lifting weights that they're going to get big, like like not feminine. You're very feminine. You're, you're a beautiful woman. But I think that some people think that if you exercise or lift weights a little bit, you're going to get like huge. I don't think they understand that it. it takes three or four hours a day and your diet and everything else. So what would you recommend somebody if they wanted to get into shape and start lifting weights and slowly? What would, what would you recommend them doing? So let me tell you this first. I hear that a lot too. I hear from women say, oh my God, you know what? I Oh my God, you look amazing. And the nice compliment, right? And I wish, you know, I look like that. And I, um, but I just don't want to get too bulky or I don't want to get too big. You know what? It is extremely hard. I cannot emphasize this big enough. It's super hard to gain muscle. It's super hard to maintain it. It's super hard to just build, uh, uh, just build muscle in general. It's really hard. So by you going to the gym and just lifting like five pounds dumbbells, you're not going to get big. You know, you, you start getting big when you start lifting like extremely heavy and you're not going to get super big either. You know, if you see those women that um, are in the physique world, like they're a little bit bigger. I mean, there's a whole different world that you have to get into hormones to grow to that level. I mean, you're not gonna get like that naturally. You, it's it's impossible. So, uh, unless you're doing hormones or something else, I mean, you're not gonna get that big. So, don't. I, my advice to all the women: start to lift weights because in the long run, it's very good. We start losing uh, muscle and bone mass as we age. So we start. We need to start getting into you know, a better conditioning and lift weights because it's really good for you, for the health. So what do you recommend? Like, I don't, B, I don't know where to start. I don't know how much weight to lift. I mean, what do I, how much do I do and how much do I do? I mean, I don't know how, I don't how much weight I should lift mm -hmm. and I don't know how much I should do. What would you recommend? Well, I would always suggest, you know, for the people that I usually train, I always start with them with 
very lightweight, uh, 10 pounders, five pounders. It, it really depends on how you feel because everybody's different. So I can handle fives, but maybe other person cannot handle fives and be the same way, right? It, it, there's a lot of factors that really interfere in, in, this, in this aspect of lifting weights. But what I would do is, you know, test yourself and see what are you able to do. And if you're comfortable with fives, okay, well, why don't you make it a challenge and go like seven and a half? And if that is comfortable, well, just go and go for the tens and some, some go to the point that it becomes a little bit of a challenge because that's when you start to see changes in your body. Now, do you recommend like sets, like sets of two or three? How do you, what do you, is set wise? Like some people, does that mean, okay, I'm going to go get the weights and just do, do one set of five reps with five pounds. So right. How do, you, how do you determine how many sets and so, so for you to see changes in your body, um, I don't have a specific number to say, oh, you know what? In the bodybuilding world, we're doing like seven sets of 20, seven sets, eight. Uh, 40 reps and things like that, like bigger sets. But um, for just normal people that want to start in the fitness journey that have, you know, want to accomplish something with their bodies and change their bodies and things like that, I'll say, you know, go to like from a safe number from three to, to four rounds of 12 to 15 reps, 12 to in between 12 and 20 reps. That That's a good number. How do you stay motivated? You're in really great shape. How do you how do you stay so motivated and focused? Are there are there days where you just go, man? I don't know if I can do this today. Or, of course, yes. So yeah. how, how how do you stay motivated? It's not always about motivation. It is. Um, I don't always feel motivated. I don't always want to go to the gym. Sometimes, you know, my moods gain my over. And um, I think that us as women, we go through a lot of um, ups and downs uh, with our hormones and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm not always motivated, but I always find the time to go and work out. For me, honestly, the gym um, is more like therapy, like a, like a mental escape that I can go and, you know, like don't touch my two hours of gym. <laughs> it's like, uh, I have to go cause it's to, to feel good in my head. So let me ask you this. It's going to be interesting. Cause I want to, I, 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 there's a lot of moms out there and you're a mom and, and I'm sure that you're in such great shape. And when did you, I guess, when do you explain to your son, Hey, mom's a bodybuilder. This is why I'm so big. This is why this, I mean, do you, do you explain to your, to your son, Hey, this is what I do. And I know that for, for, he probably sees other moms that are not in your, sh in your shape. Or, and, and how do you explain it to him? And how did you get into bodybuilding? So in the first place, um, I don't think he sees me as, Oh, my mom is different. You know, everywhere we go, uh, well, mostly, all the places that we go and that he's with me and everybody sometimes people say oh my god you're in a meet you're in a your body looks really good or i get compliments from people and so he hears it and so sometimes he's like mom you know what oh my god when i have my kids i'm gonna tell I'm going to tell them that you're a legend, you know? And so it's pretty cute. Um, I don't really have to explain him much because he's been to, to some of my shows. So um, I, I explain him, you know, how important health is. Um, but he doesn't see me any different. He sees me like, oh, you know, like a role model. Like, oh, you know, like, hey, your mom looks good. You know, and he tells me that, and uh, oh, is that your sister? So it's 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 a good thing, you know. And he sees it, and he knows the impact of health and how good it is to exercise and live a healthy lifestyle. 
So what made you want to go into bodybuilding? I assume you started out just by working out because like you said, you just wanted to stay in shape. What kind of like turned the corner for you where you said, hey, I would like to do bodybuilding competitively? Um, so um, um, I think that I got to a point where I said, okay, I'm satisfied with my body and I want to take it to another level. Um, it was just the fact that, um, I was seeing a lot of people. I used to train at the Mecca at Gold's Gym. I didn't decide it back then that I wanted to be a bodybuilder, but I would see a lot of people and their discipline. And then after being around bodybuilders and seeing, having friends, bodybuilders, I was like, huh. I wonder, you know, what would it be if I take that step into just going to a first show? And I did. It was, uh, I think I work a, very good under pressure. So taking that decision really pushed me to, to, to do a harder work, you know? So let me ask you this. I know that you probably have had, have you ever had anybody that crit critiqued you, whether it's on Facebook or... Or, or, or Facebook or Instagram or any TikTok or just or just how about in the in, in your own community or friends and say, hey, you're getting too big or why do you want to do this? And what kind of stuff did they say? And then how did you overcome that? Um, they've said mean things. Um, they've said, um, yes, that I'm too big, that I, uh, I look manly, that I look. I don't pay attention to that because it's my body at the end of the day. Um, it's how I like to look at myself in the mirror and see myself um, as a happy person and what I'm satisfied with. Um, sometimes it gets to your feelings, you know, but I have very thick skin. And so I think that none of that has ever bothered me in, in any way. It, if, if, if it's something that comes from love is telling you which has happened to me too you know i had a, a a boyfriend that would say like oh you know what you're getting too big and i don't like you being too big well this is what i do i'm sorry you know yeah yeah no I, and, and let me ask you this what kind of things in terms of like when you talk to other people and you're training people um because you overcame those kind of barriers yourself what are some of the big barriers that some of the people that you train have, like some of the women and the men that you train, what are some of the most common things that you hear, like why they can't work out or, or stay in shape? What are some of those common things that you hear? And then how do you push them through that? Um, mainly I would say that it's time. Oh, I don't have time to work out. Or, um, yeah, I would say that's the, the the number one reason why everybody doesn't work out, you know. Oh, you know, like, um, I do this, I do that, and I don't have the time to work out. Some people just don't want to do it. They, I mean, we all have 24 hours, and there's people working out 5 in the morning, 3 in the morning. I see people train, like, I, I had, like, cyclist friends that are training three in the morning three to five in the morning and then they just go to work so it's basically really no excuse for it. you don't need to be at the gym like everybody else like two hours you need to be at the gym 30 minutes 45 minutes you don't even need to go to the gym let's make it simple like that you know you can sometimes it's harder to do it you're on your own and do it in your house but honestly there's no really excuse go for a run and go or, or like you said even go for a walk i mean i don't think people understand that like in terms of a non in non-impact or swim because i know you like to swim so i mean there's a million different ways to do exercise even if you don't have the money to go to the gym you correct can, you can start something so i want to ask you how do you balance um being a mom you know and and your career is it been difficult because you have the bodybuilding career is very, very time consuming. And then also you have an own business and then you're a trainer too. How do you balance all these things and prioritize things? 
so the reason why I just don't work a nine to five job is because I wanted to dedicate my time to my son. I wanted to be close to him and just I wanted to be able to go drop him off at school, pick him up from school, do homework with him and be attentive with him and just have a, a meal together. I wanted to be able to do all that. So that's the reason why I'm not in a nine to five job. And I never liked it anyways. Like I've always liked to be independent and do my own thing. And um, it's not easy, but you know, it, I, I find my time around and I always schedule everything around, um, around his school and making sure that I, he's being prioritized. And uh, sometimes, you know, I, I always have to carry him with me everywhere I go. And, um, but it's also part of his process that he needs to learn that we need to sacrifice sometimes, you know, to get other things in return. So he has to go with me. I say, you know what, baby, we're gonna go to work because I have this client. And then maybe we can go for an ice cream after, you know, and kind of balance it that way. And how, how many shows do you do per year? Right now, I've been doing one a year um, because of the same reason, you know, it's really hard to grow. So um, I train almost every day. The day that I'm not lifting weights, I'm doing some high interval training or I'm doing um, other stuff, uh, cycling or I'm doing other stuff. I, I sometimes get to sub for um, body works class with little weights uh, in a group environment. And, but other than that, um, you know, I, I, I've been trying, I was, I was trying to compete twice this year uh, and, and I'll see, I, I'm not really sure about it. Um, I think there's a show in November that I wanted to do. So that, that is still tentative. Uh, if that's the case, I'll be doing two shows this year. B, but, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this, B. I know the bodybuilding world is super competitive. And I know it's extremely stressful. Um, what is it like in the bodybuilding community? Are people friends with one another or is it kind of a weird adversarial relationship or are the women supportive of each other? in in your bodybuilding community it is i really think it depends on the person i mean it could be either competitive or it can be like really friendly in my perspective i've always had uh and ended up with a tons of friends out of a show i i and another thing is that this is very important to mention. Um, when I work out, I'm always working out with the mentality, you know I, what, there's some somebody out there working out harder than me. So I, I always try to push hard, right? But I don't ever compare myself to anybody else going into the same show because we are all different. We develop different. We So I can you cannot compare to anybody else. Of course, when you're on stage, you get to see and then admire like for me it is very inspiring to see other women with the same passion and love for the sport you know the fact that we all have the strength because it is very stressful sometimes it can get very um it, it is a very demanding sport where you have to sometimes be doing cardio like fasted cardio with nothing in your system and you're really tired sometimes it becomes really stressful at some point and then you're very restricted on the diet. So that becomes really, really negative because you have all these mood swings going on. You're sometimes in a really bad attitude. And so, but when you see it from the point of view that, oh my God, you know, like all these people are doing the same thing and they have the same passion and the same drive. And then you see them in the stage it is just so inspiring to see their bodies, their physiques, and how they're, they've developed. For example, this last show that I went, 
I placed third third place. And I was just looking at the other girls and I was like, oh my God, look at those legs. I want legs like that. You know, and they had they had massive legs. And I was like, and 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 in other people's eyes, my, my legs are already big, you know. And I was just thinking, oh my God, I want legs like that. Yeah, I I think that goes back to be what you were saying is I think that people have to understand there's a that bodybuilding um that you can be healthy and i think you live a very healthy lifestyle but i don't think they understand in order to get that like for competition ready there's kind of a downside physically to it too yes like course. i don't think people understand that that like you have to dry out you have to i don't think they understand that before a competition you're not drinking a lot of fluids. You're doing it. So I think when people see those bodybuilders, they go, oh my God, they're just so ripped, but they don't understand. There was a lot of sacrifices that you made hour, like 24 hours before you hit that stage that probably aren't the most healthy decisions in the world for sure, because you're not drinking. There's a lot of things you're not doing in order to, for people to have that maximum look of your muscles. So I think a lot of people don't understand the sacrifices that, people make uh, yeah when you're, when you're doing bodybuilding yes there's a lot of stuff that go into that last week of um going on stage like um your your carbs just deplete um your water depletes everything just goes like really and you're just like kind of surviving you know and that you cutting all that sometimes doesn't allow you to sleep then you're going to the bathroom like 30 times at night because you're just draining all that water that you have in your system just to dry out as much as you can. You have to go in long sessions to the sauna for 40 minutes to just to get all that water out of your system, those veins popping. And sometimes people see and say, oh my God, that's disgusting, you know? And oh my God, you know, but that is just for the show, you know, it, you won't stay like that. Um, you get like super skinny on your face and dry and it, you look like a skeleton and people are like, are you sick? No, I'm not sick. I have a show coming up, you know? So yeah. It, and like you said, it passes like one, once you're, comp and, and I think most of the people, unless you want to do bodybuilding and it, it, that's why it's important when I have these kind of podcasts is it's, it's, you know, you're focusing on the healthy side and then those people that, that want to do bodybuilding have to understand that there's other sacrifices to it that you're going to have to make before a show. So there's like a balance to everything. Um, I'm going to ask you this question and uh, and then I'm going to go into your business because I you're, uh, besides your fitness, business, I want to talk about a little bit about uh, your meal prep business because that's a really important thing. And I, I think a lot of people now are moving toward that so that they can eat a healthy balanced meal especially since i think it blew up since covid mm -hmm. but um okay here we go you ready here's a challenge yeah. questions for you v. uh best way to build shoulders best exercise to build shoulders i i i have so many but uh I would give say, me one give me one uh arnold press okay so arnold press and they can look it up okay there you go okay you can even show it okay arnold press that's for best for shoulder okay best for arms bicep curls just your bicep uh for your back lats uh lat pull downs that pull downs okay oh right, look at you go girl and then um stomach abs 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 diet 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 so so what kind of exercises besides i know it has to be diet and then you know everybody always says oh i can't get rid of that fat around my waist so it's going to be and i always tell you, it's diet in combination with exercise so Diet's going to be number one, right? Obviously for that. But but what kind of stomach exercise do you recommend people do? You know what? It, it's funny because um, although you know, in 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 when we're show ready, uh, I don't do as many ab, ab workouts at all. Not as many. It just comes out with the diet, honestly, because we all have the abs, but. Uh, if you really want to do and um, bring them a little bit bigger and showing and sh like showing a little bit more, there's a ton of ab work that you can do. You know, Russian twists, just the regular sit-ups, planks. Planks are really good to to build, um, you know, longer 
periods of times for planks. Yeah, I think sometimes the people challenge is that, hey, you know what, I want to get rid of it. It's diet and obviously you got to do cardio. Right. And, and you know, and but the, but the, it's it's a and I think a lot of people don't understand that sometimes it's difficult to have. And this is why I really I, I admire a lot of triathletes, because they have the cardio side and they have the strength side. But the thing is, you're always it's hard to have both. And I think people don't understand that there's a give and take to all this. Right. Mm -hmm. um, because when you run, you lose muscle mass. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, you're trying to exercise and lift weights. And so I, I know some people that get frustrated is go, hey, big, I run a lot. I can't put on the muscle. I say, well, you're going to have to reduce your running. Right, right, and right. And increase the, the weight lifting. You can't have both. And or, or I say, you can have both, but understand you're not going to ever get as big as a bodybuilder. You, mm -hmm. So it's kind of like you have to pick your poison. And another, um, let me just let me just make a parenthesis. Is there a lot of people just starve themselves because they think, oh, by not eating, I'm gonna get skinny, and that that's not how it works, you know. In order for a person to really uh, hit that body fat, they need to be intaking the right amounts of macros for their specific goal, you know. So let's say if I wanna uh, hit. Um, my body fat right i'm going to be eating accordingly or if i want to gain muscle mass okay i'm going to be eating according that goal so it really depends like i don't i don't understand why people are like just like cutting a lot obviously for, to to lose fat you have to be in a caloric deficit that's for sure and for granted you know like there's no other way to go around it but uh, when I hear people, oh, I'm not eating or I'm just eating a salad or this or that or, and not eating enough protein, I mean, then it's when all gets messed up because then whenever you're not eating enough, then you're going to gain it back soon. And I, yeah, yes. And I have friends that have done fasting and I'm like, and let all my friends that have fasted, you know what happened? They lost the weight. But mm -hmm. guess what? they gained it back three months later. Yeah. So, so it's like, I tell them, you know what, you're losing muscle. There's a lot of stuff that you're giving up for that. I'm not saying that the intermediate fasting doesn't work for somebody, uh -huh. but I know some people that they'll fast for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, here we go. Legs. Uh, how about thighs? Thighs. Uh, they have doctor, they have doctors. Oh, okay. Oh, no, that's great. And then what about glutes? Hip thrusts. Heavy oh. hip thrust. <laughs> oh, 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 really? Are those the best? Yeah, that, that's my favorite exercise. Um, and what about um, deadlifts? They are also very good um, uh, for hamstrings, glutes. Very good. Okay, calves. See, I'm doing everything. I'm getting you on it. I'm getting all the good advice from here from you. The calves, well, it's just a calf machine, you know, They're that up and down. Or so you don't have to be on the machine either. You know, you can just get on one little step and be doing like bringing your toes up and down. I, I probably know the answer to this already, uh, but cardio. And I know you're going to say cycling. So we're going to we'll say uh, okay, no, so we'll actually, cycling. What I love and I when I tell people to do something because uh, they want to get in better shape, I always tell them, you know what? Circuit training. I love circuit training because it gets you going um, exercise after exercise, little periods of rest, and then go back at it again. And so that keeps your heart rate going and brings it up and down where as to where you're like losing fat. Yeah, I was telling, I told some friends about that as well. You just take shorter breaks between your lifts and then you can, you can make, and you can do your cardio as well as your, yeah, so yeah, you're work, working both with your own, you could be with your own body weight or you can just get like some some weights. Um, okay, so I wanted to ask you this and then I'll ask you some fun questions. So I'm not going to torture you anymore today. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate it because I know like you, and I, I didn't even mention this, you do modeling as well. So, um, so um, okay, so you have a meal prep business. Correct. And... Um, how difficult it is how difficult is it for you to have that kind of business and and how do you decide on the macros and how do you decide on how to design it 
Um, first, I get to have a consultation with um, whoever wants to go into meal prepping. And I ask them all these questions about their goals and what are they trying to um, get into meal prepping and um, what what are they trying to do with it and why are they trying to do it? Because for some people it's like, oh, you know what? I don't know what portions should I be eating? Or other people would say, oh, you know what? I just don't have the time to, to cook at all. Or other people would be like, oh, you know what? It's just that um, I don't know. I don't know why, what I should be eating, you know? So I always get a consultation with them before even starting their, their, their meal plan. And then according to their goals, I put them in a, in a meal plan and whatever it's um, uh, amount of uh, meals, it's good for them. I divide that throughout the day and that's how it works. Okay. So now I get to ask you these fun questions here. Okay. So. Right. Here we go. What is your guilty pleasure food wise? Because I know you eat healthy all you hit eat healthy. How what is your cheat food? I love chocolate. So anything chocolate, I'm on it. <laughs> um, your favorite kind of music. And I know you all like all kind of music. So what is your like your top music uh, oh, work? Yeah, that's music? very hard because I do play all kinds of music and more more so because, you know, my cycling classes are very varied. But I like um, Spanish rock. I like Spanish pop. And then, uh, okay, so if you can meet one person in the world, it doesn't matter in any time period. Who would it be and what would you say to them? For what? It could be for anything. B. This is this is like for anything. If there's, I the person there's, for... there's one person in the world that you would love to meet. It doesn't matter what the interest is. It's just, it could be politics or music or whatever. Just one person in the world that you'd love to meet. They say, B, you know what? You got one person to choose. Who would it be and who would you say? David Goggins. Oh, it, oh okay. Because he's so... And what would you say? You know what? I've been um, I, I've been listening to most of his uh, motivational. I also read his um, uh, his book, one of his books. Um, it, it, um, yes, yes, I yeah, I read his book as well. Yes, so it is very inspiring. He has like that push mentality. And sometimes, you know, you see other people trying to quit or sometimes myself, you know, like I feel like, oh, so down or whatever. Sorry, all oh, there's a little bit of a delay on the internet, so we might have lost her here. So um, David Goggins book is Can't Hurt Me. Uh, it's one of the most, it's a great motivational book and that's a good, good example of somebody that kind of balances the, the aerobic side conditioning with the, um, weightlifting side but i think we lost v so um thank you so much for being here today and till next time and thank you so much and we're going to continue finding amazing guests for everybody thank you so much for your time and take care everybody till next time